Good evening, everyone. This is Evangelist Felicia Brogy uh, with uh, another night of Thursday night teaching here with Positive Outcomes Ministries, uh, sponsored by Change Life Virtual Ministries. And I'm so glad that you could be here with me tonight. It has been a wonderful, a uh, wonderful month uh, with the topics surrounding Black history and various uh, Christian uh, doctrines and scriptures and things that we have been implementing here in the ministry. And I'm so glad that you guys could be here tonight. So before we get started, let's go ahead and start out with a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for allowing us to be here tonight. Please allow uh, all ears that hear to receive with humility and clarity and discernment. Give me the ability to only speak in a way that is pleasing to you. Jesus, now we pray. Amen. So uh, again, this month, we've been uh, reflecting on a lot of things dealing with uh, Black history and things of that nature. And tonight, our topic is dealing with discrimination uh, as Christians. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this being the last CNT of this Black History Month, it is a necessary uh, topic that I felt like was good to go into tonight. And uh, the scripture that I want to uh, start out with and reference as a theme is going to be Psalms 56, 3 and 4. And this is coming from the King James Version. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. So with that being said, let's get back to our topic, discrimination. Now, discrimination, that word just in itself kind of gets your blood bubbling, so to speak. Uh, I think no matter who you are. Uh, but since this is, uh, this is our topic for this month, we're, we're focused on uh, discrimination of African-Americans. And this is not to say that that in no one else uh, experiences discrimination, but that that's what our focus is. And the definition of discrimination is the act of making unjustified distinctions between people based on groups, classes, or other categories to which they belong or are perceived to belong. People may be discriminated against on the basis of race. And this is uh, what our focus is. Discrimination is something that is not just coming down through history. It's something that we, we deal with on a daily basis. Sometimes it's something that is still very active today. Uh, and man, if we wanna be completely honest, and we are not exempt to those things just because we are Christians. And that's something that we need to always remember is when, when we are conscious, aware, and, and honest with ourselves about what is that allows us to be more equipped for the spiritual warfare of any weapon that's formed against us. Because no doubt discrimination is definitely something that is a weapon. And with anything else, it's no different than, than anything else. It's going to be something that the devil is going to use to confuse you. It's going to be something that the devil is going to use to weaken you. And it's going to be something that the devil is going to use to distract you from your purpose. And as Christians, we can't run from that. Uh, we, we can't get away from it. We can't uh, minimize it. We just have to face it head on. And with that being said, one of the things that is very, very 
important for us to remember is discrimination is persecution. It's persecution. And the definition of persecution is hostility and ill treatment, especially on the basis of ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation, or political beliefs. And again, we're focused on uh, race and ethnicity uh, tonight. Uh, but there are, again, different areas of persecution. But with that being said, in knowing that discrimination is another form of persecution, and as African-American Christians, knowing that there's going to be times where we face it, we have to be equipped. We have to be equipped. And with anything, any, any other persecution, we have to still rely on God. And of course, that's easier said than done. But three of the areas where we know that discrimination is a persecution that we are going to deal with, we have dealt with, or we are dealing with, is going to allow us to live in the reality of knowing that just because we're Christians, that doesn't mean we, we can turn a blind eye to reality. And this discrimination being persecution, you're seeing it as what it is, you're understanding what it is, and you're preparing yourself for the spiritual warfare that surrounds you. So one of the areas where you're going to have to deal with discrimination is at your job, your place of employment. There may be distinctions, there may be times you are overlooked. You may be fulfilling your job description, but you are still going to be in a place sometimes that because of the race that you are and the color of your skin, you're going to have to deal with persecution. This does not have to be uh, from someone in authority. It can come from someone in authority, but this could also be from individuals. There are, there are stereotypes, and that are going to come up sometimes that are going to discourage you and are going to weaken you. And in those moments, you need to think about uh, the fact that no matter what it may be, you are still a representative of God. You are still, uh, even in those angry moments, you are still going to be uh, required to uphold the standards of God and the fruits of God's spirit. And unfortunately, with that being said, you have to also remember that you can only control what you can control. You can control how you react. You can control in those angry moments, and you are no doubt going to have them. Remembering as a Christian, it's okay to be angry, but sin not, as the Bible says. And so with that being said, you're going to have to understand and remember that at your job, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, whether it's virtually, uh, in person, uh, a remote position, a seasonal position, wherever it is that you are employed and dealing with the persecution of discrimination, you're going to have to still be long-suffering, kind, and you're going to have to still be loving. And that sometimes means that within your anger, you're going to have to separate yourself from the situation. Every specific situation has a different, uh, a different toolbox for us as Christians. You know, um, if it gets to the point where you feel like you have to go to a higher authority, legally, you also have that right. We don't have to roll over in a situation that is extreme to the point where it does have to be brought to authorities at your place of employment, okay? We want to be safe, and we want to use discernment as Christians. And again, this is not if, this is when this happens. Discrimination is real, and it is a persecution that you cannot ignore when it comes to employment. The next area uh, of dealing with discrimination and the persecution and the effects of it is going to be at home. Um, you might say, who in the world will be dealing with discrimination at home? 
you might have to deal with it uh, as far as your in-laws. You may have to deal with it as far as uh, people connected to family members. If you're in an interracial relationship, you might have to deal with being rejected from some. You may have to deal with uh, landlords sometimes that initially may act a certain way uh, to get some type of financial gain from you. You may have to deal with uh, utility companies. Uh, you may have to deal with uh, your child's educators. You never know where it's coming from. But even though you are in your personal space, you are still dealing with other people virtually, dealing with other people as far as uh, your residential uh, situation, and you may have to deal with it then. You never know where it's going to be. And sometimes, unfortunately, over the years, our uh, ancestors in the privacy of their own homes, they have had to deal with discrimination. And it's something that we may not want to talk about. And I'm not saying that it happens as often or it's as intense as it was, but it's still something that we have to deal with. Sometimes even in neighborhoods or surrounding areas, there may be uh, people who live in the same area as you that uh, have a certain attitude about you because of the color of your skin. You as a Christian, you have to be prepared for that. You have to pray for a hedge of protection, but still understand that although God may be there as a protection, you still have to deal with the effects of, of being discriminated against. And, and unfortunately, we still have to deal with uh, that as a reality in a lot of the communities, even in the place that you live, even in the place that you live, the subdivision uh, or the, the community, or maybe even the same street, or it could be a next door neighbor that, that has an issue. It's not necessarily a landlord per se, uh, or it could be personnel connected to the landlord, you know, that has an issue with you because of the color of your skin. That's a form of persecution that, that we face sometimes as Christians. And uh, back to the scripture in Psalms, uh, in God, we have to put our trust. We have to keep trusting in the fact that uh, just like any other weapon, anything else that the devil comes up with, this is, discrimination is just another thing we have to deal with. And the irony of the situation is this is sometimes in the most intimate areas of our lives and even in our, our place of residence, unfortunately, that's a reality. And in praying our way through, it's going to allow us to be a lot more equipped, a lot more prepared. And, you know, uh, with your children playing out in the neighborhood or with you just kind of interacting with people uh, with whatever residence you, you are at you're going to have to still deal with discrimination. So you have to be equipped enough to, uh, to be able to be aware and you may still be angry and you may still be fearful, but by putting on the armor of God, you're still remembering this is something else that the devil is using to try to get to me, or this is something else and someone else's flesh that's, that's trying to make me feel less and trying to attack my purpose. And by using this form of persecution and discrimination, I have to understand and I have to know how to deal with this as a Christian. And uh, the last thing we're going to discuss, and probably one of the most important things tonight, is discrimination in ministry. You know, um, unfortunately, there's going to be people that don't feel like you have the right to represent Christianity. I speak of Christianity just like I'm speaking of uh, African American history and discrimination right now, uh, because that's where I'm coming from. Obviously, there are other uh, organized. Uh, uh, forms of uh, things that people do out there, uh, but I'm speaking of the Christianity right now and in ministry and kingdom work while we're out on the highways and byways, uh, it is an unfortunate thing that discrimination is used as, as a form of uh, a form of uh, something that's going to try to halt you, stop you, uh, oppress you. And, and, and we're human. Mm-hmm. Amen. And as I mentioned earlier, in being human, that means that we're going to be tested, mm -hmm. just like the apostles were tested, you know, and, and Jesus said, they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you also. 
Discrimination is a way of doing that. Uh, there may be areas where we're told that we're not allowed to go in. Sometimes there will be excuses used. Uh, but the bottom line is sometimes no matter what's said to us or no matter what we, uh, what we learn to be a policy or a reason why, sometimes we won't be able to minister to certain people or certain areas simply because we are African-Americans. And there's, there's no nice sugar-coated way to say that. There's simply people who don't wanna listen to us, places we can't go, things that we can't do, things that we cannot be a part of, things that we will uh, be uh, looked down upon or ridiculed simply because of the color of our skin. And so in knowing that and facing ministry and trying to do the best we can to carry out our purpose, to the best of our ability with the discernment and the wisdom of knowing that the bigger picture is God's purpose. And in God's purpose, I have seen individuals start out being discriminatory towards African-Americans in ministry. And then next thing you know, they're working together in the kingdom. So, you know, there's going to be times where God works it out. And then there's going to be other times where we have to just see the reality of this this is persecution coming up against us as African-Americans. It's something else we have to deal with. So you have to stay prayed up. You have to stay uh, present with, in, with the armor of God. You have to be able to have the strength enough to not let it discourage you from, from carrying out your purpose. And so you need to pray every time you are starting to do ministry work. We should be doing that anyway, but should, we should especially uh, do that during a time uh, where we know we're entering a situation where we can be uh, discriminated upon because of the color of our skin. So I hope something I said uh, this evening was helpful. You know, uh, just because we're ending Black History Month does not mean we're ending Black History. And just because uh, we're, we're not going to be uh, regularly uh, talking about it, maybe, that it doesn't stop there. Uh, the learning continues as Christians. And as African-American Christians, the learning continues, the prayer needs to continue, the Christian research needs to continue, and always have uh, someone with you when you go in ministry. Uh, always pray before going in ministry. Always be aware uh, of where your authority figures are in ministry. Uh, always use discernment and wisdom when you are out in outreach, because unfortunately, we do still live in a time where we are discriminated against as African-American Christians, and we have to be on guard. And uh, although we don't allow fear to control us, it, it doesn't mean we're not going to feel it. And the reality of the situation is we need to be equipped as Christians. So I hope this did help someone. Please join me in prayer as we end things out tonight. God, thank you so much for this word that I've been able to bring forth to our viewers uh, in light of dealing with discrimination as Christians. Please allow everyone to receive this information with humility and discernment and wisdom. Thank you so much for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I want to say good night and I will see you next Thursday. You have a wonderful week and thank you so much for being here again uh, for TNT. Thank you. Bye-bye.